Rising Society. Yo, 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 what's going on, my people? I in the zone, man. You know what it is. It's your boy, Big V, here with another episode of the Zone Sports Podcast. You see my boy over there with the San Francisco 49ers hat. Yo. What's good with your boy? What's up, man? It's your boy, Corey, as we can see up top. Also known as Cool C, also known as C-double-O. What the hell, man? What's going on, man? Man, you already know the vibe. You know what I mean? If you don't know, if you don't know, it's been on the rock. This podcast is always sponsored by, you guessed it, my brand, Sky Zone Society. Make sure you shop in that skyzonesociety.bigcartel.com. And real quick, I want to apologize to the people, man. Yo, we ain't been on a high game. It's your boy just erased the podcast that I was supposed to upload for last week. So we got a lost episode hanging out there. I know, I know. And matter of fact, to those who are out there, if y'all can find it, you know what I'm saying? Please send it through. Because we have send some, it th- man, please send <laughs> it through. Hey man, man please, it's technology. Man. It it happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's man, you good though. How you know, bro? You been good? Yeah, man, we good. You know, these um you know, I'm I'm getting to old man status, and we're going to get into this in, in a minute before we get started. But, man, I, I keep forgetting that uh, these finals, man, they come on at 9 o'clock. And I'm just like, good God, I'm going to have to start taking, like, some daggone no-dos or some coffee, man. Dude, I was out of it last night. Out mm. of it. But, you know, I was at – shout out to NBA TV um, for the recap. To catch the second, it's like I was up, but I might as well have been sleepwalking. Uh, my wife was like, Yo, just go to bed, yo. And I was like, Yo, I can't, it's the finals on. Like, I got the like, even if I'm dozing in and out, I still got the act like I'm watching it, but I saw enough, I, I saw a good amount, you know. I, I saw the torch fest, I saw that absolutely, bro. Like, for real, man. Like, last night, man, if you ain't too into the game, like Corey. You know what I'm saying? But caught the highlights. You might have you, you, you might have seen the Suns, you know what I mean, put up a W against the Bucks in a tight, tight win. You know what I mean? Um man, what a game. I watched the whole entire game. Uh yeah. man, like yo, I want to react to the game first. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. go first and just react to it. Um, like I said, what a game last night in the first game, the finals last night. Um bro. I want to, um, you know, we, we always give praise to CP3 and, yeah. and, and everything that he does, man. I, I want to start, man, and speak on that boy DeAndre Ayton. That's what I want to do. I want to mm. start it off, and I want to speak on DeAndre Ayton and the job he's doing. Bro, man, what a pick and roll tandem he is with, 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 with Paul down there, man. I mean, bro. When is the last time we've seen a center and point guard mm. pick and roll of this magnitude? Mm. I can tell you, what comes to mind, I want to say Kobe and Shaq. I yeah. really do, man. When I think of centers and point guards that run an offense as efficiently as these two guys, man, bro, I, 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 I think of scenarios and every scenario I come up with. Shaq is involved. Yeah. I can go to Penny and Shaq. Yeah. Kobe and Shaq. Shit. Wade and Shaq. I mean, the, I mean, first of all, we know Shaq is, is a is a Hall of Famer, of course. We, we, we don't have to even put any respect on Shaq, man. Um, but man, I, I cannot I cannot express enough how reminiscent the tandem of Paul and Aiden is to Shaq and whoever. Beautiful to watch. I, it, it, bro, I looked up last night, man, and Chris Paul came off the pick. And right when I thought he was going to pull up for the mid-range, he threw an alley to Aiden, and it was so beautiful. It was so <laughs> textbook, as they say. It's throwback. Man, it's throw, it's throwback it's throw, basketball. It's so, it, bro, it's so retro that, man, even in a losing effort, I enjoy just watching them just play that fucking pick and roll. I enjoy it way more than I watch Giannis playing bully ball, just going down there and just sh- shouldering his way to the cup. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I enjoy that way more 
And don't get me, don't get me wrong. God, that is effective what Giannis does. It is effective when Giannis can kick it out to uh, Drew Holiday, those boys, and get the shot up for a quick three or or, or drive or, or, or whatever that whatever have you. But it is not more beautiful to watch than the tandem of those two. And again, man, it's crazy because yo, we were speaking on the Phoenix Suns. Yo, if we keep them the hundred, like we are, like we said on this podcast before. They are the same team minus one person. Yeah. This, and, and keep in mind, <laughs> this one person isn't a, a draft pick that just came into the league last year. Yeah. This is a 36-year-old man. This is a seasoned vet, Corey. Do you understand what I'm telling you? They are in the final because of one guy. Yeah. Because of one guy. And keep in mind, yo, for the people that, that don't understand, and I spoke on this on this podcast about the draft of DeAndre Ayton and Luka Doncic and those boys. You know what I mean? Ayton went first in that draft. Yeah. And if we keep it in the book, he has not lived up to his potential as we thought that he would be as a first round, first pick draft. Let's just keep it in the book. He hasn't been on no Shaq shit. He ain't been on no. He, he hasn't been on any dominant, any dominant thing. I say that, but I want to say that saying. He hasn't made a lot of noise around the league. Yeah. But if you check the stat score, he he doing a double double. Yeah. He, he's been doing a quiet double double down there on the low. On the low ski. And I want to say on the low ski because yo, nobody was pulling for Phoenix until Chris Paul got there. These niggas was at, these niggas was in a graveyard somewhere. And mm-hmm. we and, and we and we, let's just keep it a book. We all thought that when Aiden went there. He was just going to be another sinner going there to die unless he went and got traded somehow. Mm-hmm. We didn't expect him to make it. We, I mean, most of us never even saw Aiton play before he came to Phoenix. Agreed. We didn't know. No, most people didn't know about DeAndre Aiton. So you went and checked the tape. Okay, the tape showed him being a dominant center in college. Okay, cool. He got to the league, Corey. Those first couple of years was rough. Granted, I say rough. But the guy was doing a double double. Yeah. With keep in mind, with a tremendous great talent and Booker, he was doing those numbers. But we, but guess what? One guy came in and is changing this whole this whole man contract for the next year. You heard Chris Paul in last last, uh, last game. He said, that "Boy, gonna get him a bag this this summer." He, Damn he right, he's gonna he, get one, bro. <laughs> Heck he, yeah, he gonna get man, one, bro. He better get one. Man, listen, we talking about the max. Yeah, we talking about Phoenix probably possibly having having two max players on that team with Booker and him. Cause Booker gonna get him a bag. You best believe. Yeah, that's automatic. That ain't even up for debate. The only thing I was debate was Aiden getting the bag. Yeah. We knew Booker was gonna get a bag. Mr. Mr. 70 points in one game. We know that already. <laughs> but but Aiden was on Aiden, Aiden's talent was in question, even with him averaging a double double, Corey. That's crazy. It is crazy. And guess what? It's more crazy to think that he owes it to one man and one man only. And he'll oh. tell you that. He'll he's tell like, you that. He, I, he'll he, t- he said that. Man, listen, it was beautiful to me, Corey. When they came, I don't even know if you saw this clip, Corey, but it was so beautiful to see when they came off the sideline during the timeout. Chris Paul went straight to Aiden. He just grabbed him, put their foreheads together. I saw and, that. And Paul just hit him on the back of the head, man. Bro, that was real. You, you said, I want to piggyback what you said real quick about it, about it being, but about the pick and roll game that they're doing being so yeah. retro like. Corey, when I saw that, Corey, it was one of those moments in the playoff story that we're going to look back on in the final specifically as one of those moments where, where when you think about when, when Jordan when, against the Lakers when he went up in number in the 90s and they just always keep showing that. Um, yeah. One of those one of those moments where you see, um, uh, you know, Magic and, and, and Isaiah, yeah. uh, you know, you know, do their thing before the game uh, in the finals, man, you know, yeah. they bump and do what they did. Um that's gonna be an iconic moment, man. I got chills up my spine, Corey. Literally, seeing Chris Paul 
just just, just in so much happiness because man, it, it's nothing like seeing somebody that truly earned it. Yeah, get there just do. I mean, I even put myself in this situation. If I just so happen just just so, somehow or another, you find out that I do a major contract with with, with Polo with my with my with my clothing on, and it's so it's worth seventy million dollars. You gonna know the blood, sweat, and tears that I yeah. put in personally yeah. to get to that point, and it's gonna send chills up just fine. I absolutely to just say, you know what, man, I know what V has put in to get that. That's yeah. how I felt, man. That's how I still feel just watching Chris Paul in these finals, man. Like, yeah. what, what, what is your reaction, man, to you man, seeing the, the highlights and everything, man? Man, um, I want to come out on the zone land, and this is going to be my coming out party. And people could take it how they want to. Um, I have a man crush going on with DeAndre Ayton. I'm in love with this man. Well, what way? Whatever way you want to. I, I, let me tell you something about. Let me tell you a few things about Mr. DeAndre Ayton. This guy's a beast. And I didn't even know those numbers he averaged um, on those years before Chris Paul, before he got there. And I actually, here's how bad he slid off the reel. And I, I use the word slid, slid or slid, but not really. Um, I totally forgot he was the number one pick a few years ago until, you know, I, I saw it on TV um, today. And it is such a discredit to how the NBA is today, not wholeheartedly, but just partially. Because bottom line, if you're not lining up on a three-point line, attempting to shoot threes, you're nobody, right? And that's what DeAndre Ayton was. And I use the word worse because that ain't the case now. And I love the fact that he is allowing the game to come to him, how he's not really going to force himself into a three-point line or to force himself to be what he is not. Yes. He is a true traditional big man. Yes. And what I love about him is his attitude. Um, and also what I love is that he plays his game. And what I also love about Monty Williams, he allows him to play his game and not force him to act like the Golden State Warriors. What? What? And, and I ain't going to rant too much longer here. Here's what I, I don't mind the three point shooting aspect. Like the game changes. Like I get it. You have more offense. You know, I remember back in the days, man, back in our days, man, like, like during the nineties predominantly, um, you know, once you start talking about scores in the 115, 110, 130, 140, those was NBA all-star numbers at, at NBA all-star game, um, score box, uh, boxes or whatever, yeah. um, of the total score. And I get it where, Golden State changed the game, Steph Curry in particular, where Mark Jackson just kind of just 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 let the, let him and Clay run crazy in the backcourt. But it works because you got arguably the illest backcourt of all time. Like that's what makes Golden State successful. Um, now, fast forward in it. You could still be successful playing that way, but you better have, you know, I would say I, I still think that there's room for sharp shooters. But what the NBA does now is make everybody pull up for the three point line. DeAndre Ayton doesn't do that. Um, it annoys me when Giannis does it. Um, I don't like because I, I don't feel like that's his game um, right. personally. Um, I would like to see Giannis develop more in the mid range. Um, now I think he got the 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 attack from the three point line when in regards of running in towards the paint, um, he has that down pat. Like you're not going to stop him, um, or you're going to pick him up. And you're going to pick up a foul and stuff like that. Um, but I, I feel like the pressure of the NBA, and this may go to Boone Hoser as well, where it's like, oh, Giannis, go ahead and shoot the three, and it's like, no, you shouldn't do that. But let's get back to Aiden, my man, question. This guy, the attitude of willingness to be coached, because he could have came in as a number one pick and been like, hey, dude, I'm the number one pick. Like, I, I, dude, I'm good. Did you come in as a number one pick? OK, no, no, no. Well, then, then, then screw you. I got this. And he is just probably one of the most humble guys that I've seen. Um, he don't want much. Um, he does whatever's asked for him. And the fact that he could deal with Chris Paul being there, who has historically said that he's a tough guy to have in your locker room. And this is what we discussed a while back where it's like, well, with these young guys, 
you know, I could show you a thing or two, I being Chris Paul, and the fact that they're not really letting the fact that Chris Paul hasn't came in. Like, like let's say, say, for example, like LeBron James, right? LeBron James is kind of similar to Jay-Z, where it's like, dude, I could show you my platinum plaques. I could show you the businesses that I own. See, it's real easy to, it's real easy for Jay-Z to sell something to somebody. Because right. us as men, we manifest things and we see it. And once we see it, it's like, oh, cool, we got it. But then you look at somebody like LeBron James, same difference, where he could come in and be like, hey, man, look, man, I, I got my three, four championships. Like, man, look, like, I, I could kind of show you how to do this here. Chris Paul don't have that. All Chris Paul has is almost having a championship. Um, going to the Western Conference Finals, not even being in the finals and the fact that they bought in. And I think the fact that Booker and Aiton with those two guys, I think it starts with them um, buying in where the rest, uh, the rest of everybody else, like your Bridges and everybody else, falls into place. Um, that is tremendous. Um, getting to the game itself. Oh, my gosh, dude. D- D- Milwaukee, I mean, Chris Paul was just able to pick his spots on the floor. Um, the hollow game was freaking astronomical. Like that, like there was no answer for Chris Paul or um Aiton or Booker in the paint. And I want to read, I'm, I want to read out some points here real quick here okay. for, for, for the Phoenix Suns here. You have my man Crush, aka Aiton, I got a plus 13 while on the court for 22 points, 19 rebounds. Good God almighty, man. I mean, that, that, that's insane. You want to look at, like, Devin Booker, 27 points. He had a plus 18 when he was on the floor. You look at CP3, 32 points, plus 17. I mean, that lets me know that they're able to get to the anywhere on the court at will. And, Cora, Cora, I yeah. want to yeah. add on to a stat while you're speaking out stats real quick that piggyback off what you said real quick. Um, I don't know if you know this either, but they also went, I think, 25 from 26 from the free throw line. Oh, so they hit their free throws. That, look, man, here's, here's, here's to me, because to me, Chris Paul is the leader. He's the point guard. He sets the tone for everything. And when I was watching the game, um, and then when I went back and caught highlights, what I was seeing was that when Chris Paul would pull up, you didn't know if he was either going to shoot it yes. or dish it to yeah. a lob for Aiton. Yeah. Like, you, and, and, and that's a real concern because – I don't have the answer as to how the hell you defend that. Because, and keep in mind, Chris Paul's smart. He had one play, and I can't remember who it was against. Um, it might have been Lopez, um, where, you know, he, he pulls up 4-3. Lopez jumps into him, not giving him enough space. Um, the same, the same, the, yeah. That same play uh, that Zaza Pachulia yeah. of uh, uh, Golden and, State and a few years ago yeah. against Kawhi Leonard mm-hmm. um, a few years ago, where he is, he being Chris Paul is so smart, he knows how to draw that because really, if you want to be technical, Chris Paul really shouldn't be much of a threat from the three point line. He can hit him. To me, Chris Paul is more of a threat from a mid range um, or whatnot and a, and a distribution standpoint. And I'm like, you got a superb player in Chris Paul who knows the rule book to a T, who can anticipate what you're going to do on defenses down to a T, where it's like, dude, I'm going to get you in foul trouble. And that got him, a, that, that, that guy, if I'm not mistaken, got Lopez a, a, a flagrant. Um, on the, uh, a flagrant one. It so, is. I mean, those are extra points that are on the board, and, and the final score was 118 to 105, and you keep having plays similar to that where, okay, we don't miss free throws. Okay, let me let me, let me me draw in for, for a free throw here. Uh, two extra points here. Hitting all the free throws, basically. Yeah. The, the, the 105 to 118, it, it's, it's a decent amount of a margin but if it wasn't for the smartness of CP3, that gap could have been even smaller to maybe 110 to 105. Um, now, let's go to the Milwaukee side of things. Right. Man, I got to give Giannis credit, man, because they, they did not announce that he was going to play until the pregame show um, when Wolves basically dropped the Wolves bomb. And I'm like, oh man, he's gonna just be basically a decoy out there. Like, like what, like what, what are they doing? Like, dude, do you care about your career? But then again, it's the finals. You can, you, we can even bring it to football where you ask, um, um, Dan Marino, where he got to the finals early in his career, um, um, the Super Bowl early in his career, and never got back. You yeah. know, so Giannis may be looking at it like, well, you know what, man, I might not get back here, and he may be looking at it from a standpoint of look at everything that had to break 
for Milwaukee to get here. Because yeah. let me we, we talked about this in previous yeah. podcasts. Milwaukee throughout the playoffs have done every single thing they could do to not be here. They caught breaks, and, and I'm not knocking them on breaks. Breaks are breaks. Like you can I, I, I unless I took a gun out and shot James Harden in the hamstring. I'm not to blame for him getting injured. So that yeah. that's I'm yeah. talking about the plays. I'm talking about Coach Boo. Yeah. I'm talking about them still settling for threes time and time and time again where they really shouldn't be. So Giannis may have that going on in the back of his mind where it's like, hey, look. And the fact that – let me pull up what, what he got because I, I thought that he was really impressive point-wise. He got 20 points last night. Now, he was only a plus one on the court. Um, the free throws, seven to twelve. That's that's gonna be what it is. Um, with that, um, I actually thought that Giannis, given the scenario, had a good game. It wasn't by Giannis standard because obviously you don't have Giannis in there just getting twenty points and thinking that's gonna be all what it is. He had a uh, a, a chase down block. Um, last oh, what night, a, what a phenomenal block, man! What oh, a phenomenal block. Oh, and, and, and I get it. People want to compare it to the LeBron James. Well. From the in a vacuum in the play, yes, it was almost identical to the play. Now, obviously, the severity of the seriousness, it wasn't a game seven, it wasn't the fourth quarter, it wasn't like a buck, whatever left in the quarter. If I'm not mistaken, this happened um either near the end of the second quarter, give or take, something like that. Um, but the fact that he's able to do that on that bum knee or whatever it is, I thought that was impressive. Um, what I take away from Milwaukee is Brooke Lopez, dude. From a defensive standpoint, Whew. minus 17 on the court, bro. Um, I don't have the answer to what Milwaukee can do because uh, man, they're doing whatever they want to do to Lopez. Like Lopez is falling for the banana in the tailpipe with Chris with Chris Paul. Um, he has no answer for Booker um, at all, even though he's a taller guy. Um, I mean, Booker could just just rover right around that guy like a little puppy. He, he just moves. And I, he is it, it, it's four on five with when he's in the court on when, when Lopez is on the court defensively. Um, I don't I don't quite know. I, I mean, you can you could throw Portis in there. I I, I I don't know who else you throw in there to combat that. Um, I don't know if you, you slide. I don't know if you slide Lopez you know, to the four stretch four, but then that's, that's, you know, Giannis natural spot. So I, I, I don't have the answer to what you do for that. Um, I will say this. I think that even though, yeah, Milwaukee, they lost. Um, I still think considering what they had, um, I still think that they could be better than what they were, were and make it a lot better. Um, Holiday was the, to me, um, offensively was the weak link up there um give it give or take what was supposed to have been happening with only 10 points um or whatnot so i think you know tucker uh you know tucker when i think of T- pj tuck i think of him more defensively i'm not if right. he can mess around and have a good offensive night that's cool but i'm thinking about firepower and that's what you're going to need and firepower from an offensive standpoint 10 points from drew holiday is not going to get it done so I do think that Milwaukee does have something to look forward to um, to tighten up, but I don't know what the hell you do with Brooke Lopez. So that was, that was, that's my reaction of the of the me sleepwalking last night and catching up on NBA TV. Shout out to NBA TV with the replay. Um, I, I like what you said about how Chris Paul, um, I mean, just how he uses the defense, man. Um, I looked up on one play. I mean, he a he blue pass Giannis, so to speak. And just kind of stopped and let Giannis fall on his back, and then he got the and one. I mean, that's just man, it's it's, smart. That's just smart, bro. You can't coach that. You can't. You can't. There's no way to coach that, bro. That's just skill and smart. That's just that's just veteran savvy, man. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you though, man. What are your game two predictions, man? Give me. I I want to. And also, give me, give me, give me the score breakdown. What you predict when it might be. How many points you think or whatever team you're choosing to win by? Man. I can't. Milwaukee has been doing this to us respectively throughout yes, the start of the playoffs. They have made our whole podcast entirely wrong this whole this whole playoffs. I am scarred by the Bucks. For me to come out here and say that 
Milwaukee is going to win the next game would be like me just literally just throwing an egg and putting it in my face. Because if I predict that Milwaukee is going to win the next game, I'm going to look like a grade A idiot because it's the Bucks. But we keep saying that and they're in the freaking finals, man. So here's 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 what I'm going to do. What's he going to do? I'm not going to predict. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to project. That way, <laughs> not a playoff work. I'm really trying to work off the technicality here, Big V. I see. I'm not I'm not going to predict, but okay. I am going to okay loosely project. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I'm an idiot, man. I'm I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm going to project that the Bucks is going to win. Okay. Game two. Okay. I am going to not predict, but project. Now, Corey, what's the difference between predicting and projecting? Not a damn thing, far as I'm concerned. I just, it just makes me feel better. Um, I'm going to say that Drew Holiday picks up because he was really the weak link. I do feel like they're going to make adjustments defensively um, where hopefully if Bootenhoser is any type of a coach, I ain't talking about offensive adjustments. Lord, I'm off that. I've been off that for a while. I do think that he will make a defensive adjustment to kind of get up in Lopez and be like, look, man, quit falling for that damn banana in the tailpipe over and over again, man. Stay at home. Stay at home. You don't leave the air unless he leaves the air. Don't you jump in. Hell, don't you jump. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a step further. Don't you even listen to Crisscross song jump at all. Don't do anything. Don't listen to House of Pain jump around. Don't do anything that relates to you jumping or leaving before you see your opponent does. Don't anticipate anything. And I know that sucks because that's kind of how you make your living. You, ha- you you think too much. You got to start anticipating. But I, I mean, look, I think the score, I think I, I, I project that they're going to win, but it's going to be 115 to 111. Okay. And I'm, and I'm an idiot. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to say that. I, I feel better calling myself okay. an idiot. Okay. For doing this, I should not be doing this. What say you? <laughs> Both of us can't pick them, bro. Come on, I need you to intentionally say the Suns are going to win. <laughs> Corey, you know, man, <laughs> I came on this podcast. Let me tell you, man, I, I have been prepping for this podcast all day. You know what I'm saying? I had my notes ready, Corey. Yeah. And I had my stuff I want to, you know, I was going to keep, you know. And I came on this podcast ready to say, I got the Suns and Seven, Corey. Yeah. And I, I had my game two prediction. I said, I'm going to say the Suns going to go to up 2 0. Yeah. Corey, man. You, I got to say, man, you have really <laughs> made me rethink this thing on this podcast, man. I, Cause I'm so tired of the Bucks making me look stupid. This, this you know this, what I'm saying, man. man you know you what know, I'm saying. You know, I, I'm tired of it, man. But then my heart don't want to bet against CP3 in the boys and that yeah. and that Phoenix crowd. You know, it's tough. They are, man. They are. Oh man, <sighs> well, Corey, man. I, I think I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna roll with the Bucks, man. I think yeah. I'm gonna roll with you and roll with the Bucks, man. Because you know what? I gotta agree with you. I think that they will make proper adjustments. Yeah. I think they will come out swinging. Yeah. And I know, I know you gave Brook Lopez a hard time, man. I did. But you know, he's one of those guys, man, that shows up when he needs to show up, and that's been proven in this playoff. It has. Yeah. Like we saw the job he did when your house was out. Like yeah. he was like a freaking all-star, dude. I mean, come on. Like <laughs> I, I man, I'm gonna say the bus, I'm gonna say the bus are gonna tie it up one one tomorrow night. Yeah. I say I say they go into go back to Milwaukee with a tied up one one. That's what I'm gonna say about game two tomorrow, man. And, and again, I had it in my mind I was going with the Suns. But yeah. you know what? You're right, Horn. I think adjustments will be made. I think that they try to shut down a lot of this pick and roll. I don't know. I don't know how, but yeah. I think that somehow, some way, some some coach 
on that bench has been taking proper notes and said, yeah. hey, we might have to go small and put Giannis' brother in. Yeah. And do that instead of Lopez to be a little bit feel more physical. Yeah. Because Giannis' brother is a bit more physical. Yeah. And he's a guy that if he gets in foul trouble, it's okay. It's okay. Like I think it's about setting the tone early I to be like, so. "Hey, we coming for you." Like, like I yeah. mean, nothing illegal, obviously, but like, look, dog, we here, and at least with Giannis's brother, you know, if he gets fouled out, so what? So what? Yeah. So what? I, I don't. I don't know. But I think we're gonna. I think I, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Bucks by six. I'm gonna go yeah. more. I'm gonna go. 106-100. Okay. You know, it's like each game is almost like its own separate season. Like, it is. You know, and I think overall, and I got, I'll, I'll give Milwaukee credit. I mean, I think they do a hell of a job of forgetting yeah. about the game before. Almost no, to, their, to their detriment. They have, they, all, they, they, forget about. they have lived by forgetting about the game before. Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, dude. Like, yeah. But, well, let, well, let's let's keep it on the final though. Let's do it. Who do you have? I, I think, man, you. I think, man, you probably agree that we have the Suns winning the series, right? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, going, absolutely. Are you going seven games or are you going six? The fan in me wants seven. Okay. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be seven. I think it's going to be six. But boy, I would love nothing more for it to go down to seven. I think it'll go seven. I want you to give me your finals MVP. Um, that being the case, it's it's going to, you know, obviously most of the times it's going to go to the winning team, which we both project that Phoenix is going to win okay. or predict, or excuse me, predict <laughs> that Phoenix is going to win. Okay. Um, Man, I tell you what, dog. It's really going to be tough between Booker and Chris Paul, man. Mm. And here's what I'm, here, here's, here's who I think is going to get it. Um, if it comes down to it, I think it's going to be Chris Paul. Um, I think it's going to be similar to how they vote for the regular season MVP because Devin Booker, first of all, this will be an embarrassment of riches if they win, obviously. So I'm quite sure Devin Booker could care at this point in his career Whoa. who would get it. Um, as he's, I think he's going to have multiple cracks at it, but you know, that yeah. maybe, maybe not. I think yeah. he will. Whereas CP3 is on his way out. Um, now, who I think should get it, um, you know, it's always typically mostly about who scores the most points, who's the most aggressive and stuff like that. Um, I think Booker should get it, but I think the storyline and the narrative is going to float towards CP3's way. And I wouldn't be mad at that because it's going to be the story. Like, and, and, and not to mention that if Chris Paul, now I'll say this, if Chris Paul keeps balling like he did last night, then it's going to be simple um or whatnot but assuming that chris paul maybe don't have another night like he has where it's more about assist and facilitating and things of that nature um it typically goes to whoever mostly has the off, uh, most offensive output um but man i, I chris p uh, chris chris paul is going to get it he's going to um, get it i think he's going to get it um, who, you, who say you I, I, I agree with you chris paul definitely should get it he's my final prediction mvp um I want to disagree with you real quick on uh, it being, you know, kind of, kind of close between him and Booker. Um, I would say if this was last year and Phoenix had made it to the finals in that bubble, yeah, I might would say Booker because man, what, what a season Booker had last year. And oh. I, I mean, I mean, come on. Oh dude. man. I mean, bro. I mean, I, I, I want people to even. I don't want people to forget about. The job he did last year in the 2020 yeah. season, dude. I mean, he played lights the fuck out every game. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so if this was the bubble season, I might just say that. But I think the fact that the Sun, again, the Suns are the same team minus one guy. Yeah. I think it's a clear favorite, dude. I think it's a it's almost a landslide. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like y'all weren't here, y'all weren't yeah. here before me. I, I literally got us here. I bought yeah. out the best in everybody. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, think about it, man. I mean, I I I, I can't I, I can only speak for myself when I say this, but I don't remember or I don't even remember hearing about 
um, my my guy my guy Mitchell um, until this year. Yeah. I mean, I mean, can we talk? Can we take a second? First of all, talk about what a hell of a job this that young man has been doing. Can yeah. we take a second to even speak on what he came from being being Russell 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 Westbrook's guy who put together all the dances when he was with OKC and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He, he, I, I think yeah, people, that's right. That's I what think, I remember him from. I, th- I, think, I didn't even know he was out of the league. You know, bro, until a few uh, or two like the start of the playoffs, bro. That you know what, man? I'm gonna take a moment, Corey, while we got a chance. Yeah, and I'm gonna jump into. The, 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 the spec on my name segment. <laughs> Corey, I saw that one coming. Corey, we, coming. Let, let, Corey, we got you're right, man. We got we got to put some. What, what is his first name? Cameron I, I, Cameron Payne. Bro. Um, call him Campaign. Okay, that's what that's what I mean. I, I, I've been I've been saying Mitchell. My bad. I, yeah. I'm, spe- I'm speaking on Cameron Payne. Pardon me, yeah. man, Corey. To go from I remember vividly him being. I, I don't I don't want to say this is a slight, but just to kind of paint a picture for those who don't actually know who he is and what he was doing for, for baseball OKC. Um he was basically the guy that was, was basically choreographing the pre dances before the game that you on some kid and play going. type shit. Yeah. I, I mean I mean he had him he had him he had him for everybody on the team team like at least starting five. You know what I mean? Um that that's what I remember him being. Um, and that's all you really remember. And, th- and I don't think that's a diss. I think you're right. Like, no, yeah, yeah. And, and again, uh, this isn't a diss. This is to put spec on his name. Um, yeah. I don't remember any highlights of anything that he did other than make up those dances for uh, OKC and, yep. and, and those boys. Yep. Um, I'm like you. I had no idea that he was out of the league. He went to, I had no idea he went to the G League and got right. They said he had, they said he had done a phenomenal job down in the G League. Yeah, um, but then he went to the G League. Then he went overseas. After I that, I didn't know. I didn't even know he went overseas. Like, overseas, like, yeah. Okay. Then came back, and I this think is, he came back on a. It was either a two way or a ten day contract. Don't quote me on that, but okay, yeah, that, that dude been through it, dude. Dude, I didn't even know he did the overseas thing. That makes more respect on his name, dude. Because now, just seeing the player that he has turned into. Being the fact that he has been through all those things, all those hurdles in his pro career, to finally get where he's playing his position, Corey. He's uh, he, he, I mean, he, he, who knew that he had the slasher mentality in him? Who Man. knew? Who knew he had that 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 mean floater in his game? Who knew he could shoot the three like that, Corey? Yeah. Who? Yeah, right. And he's a lefty, so he's even harder to defend. Dude, the guy that like what, what a man, what an explosive first step this guy had, man. Man, man, to sit here on this show and make me put spec on his name. Yes, when he's came from being the choreographer from OKC to mm-hmm. I believe to now being basically man a six man a a dominant six man easy 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 for the Phoenix Suns. Mind you, who haven't been in the playoffs in over Mm-mm. twenty in what twenty years? Almost twenty years, dude. For him to be a part of this run, that young man has earned all the respect from me. Absolutely. Um, Eva. Um, real quick, he played for uh, a team in China. I can't pronounce it properly, but he played um, in. Ch- he was in China during the 2019 2020 season. Corey, <laughs> I just yeah, man, man. crazy. I mean, but, and and, and, and to even think about most players go over there, they don't really make it back to the league mm-hmm. because they they're, mm-hmm. getting, they're they're getting good money over there. They're getting treated like royalty over there. So That's I'm, right. You know, why, why would I come back? You know. Yeah. He chose to come back and and also be a player that made an impact on this team to actually get them to the final. Man, man, listen, man, man, hats hats off the camera, pain, man. I, I wish Absolutely. You, I, I, man, you talk about somebody who need a bag or something. Yeah, man, listen. I, I, I'm talking about a, a, a night. I mean, because you got to think about it. These cats in the NBA, of course, it's not the '90s pay scale. I mean, and, and this isn't the slight of anybody, but you got guys that aren't even as good as Cameron Payne making money out here, man. Absolutely. 
this guy deserves a, 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 a nice, I want to call it a small big bag. He yeah. deserves a small three-year, $60 million. I, I wouldn't be mad. Man, come, I, I, I wouldn't would be mad at it, man. I mean, come on. And come you got to look at it like what he allows for Chris Paul to do. Normally, the uh, problems, like say, like with LeBron James and our Lakers, it's like, okay, well, when him and AD goes off the court, where's the scoring going to come from? Right. He allows for Chris Paul to stay out for stretches to get the rest that he needs to get, being an older player, and to come back and to, and to have Chris Paul come back and be fully rejuvenated. The scoring really does not drop off. At all with campaign. I mean, campaign holds his own scoring. As and you, a know, point guard. you know, I'm glad you said that because what a job that he did while Chris Paul was out. Oh my gosh. I, you, you know what? I'm trying my best not to be a prisoner of the moment, but I, I almost want to say that if campaign wasn't there while Chris Paul was out, you think Phoenix would have advanced? I mean, maybe it would have been a hell of a lot tougher. I, I'm not saying they would or wouldn't, but I'm saying it's yeah. not really a far out question to ask. You, you, you're right. That's all you're I'm right. saying. You're right. That's you're all, right. I'm, that's all no, I'm saying. No, you're right, Corey, because that because like you said, he's been getting his own shots. He's been, I mean, creates he, his own shots. Corey, I mean, coming off the bench, I mean, it's only a handful of guys, Corey, that who who I know that when I think six man coming off the bench and get his own own shots. That's hard to do. Court, I only think of the players of Lamar Odom. Yeah. I only think of the players of my man Lou Will. Yep. You know there you go. I only think of the players of Jamal Crawford. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Those it's hard guys, to come into a game cold and create your own shots. Cold? You normally got to get in rhythm. You normally got to attack the basket first. These court, guys could come in and, and create their own shot cold. That's crazy. I, I mean, and we talk, I mean, again. The journey this man has been on, man, and, and where he is now, man. I just want to salute and double take my salute hand on that. You, yes, Cam sir. Cameron Payne, man. Phoenix pay the man fifty million, three year, fifty million. He did whatever, whatever he's getting now, triple it. I agree. That's it. Let's triple it. I agree. He'll if, be if, 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 if you in Phoenix, if you were in doubt, if and you wanted proof that this man needed to get paid, look at the footage of what he did. When Chris Paul was out, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I kind, I kind of want to keep it on Chris Paul, and you know, for, for for a second, um, and keep it in the game. Corey, I don't know if you've been aware, and I don't know if my ladies and gentlemen of the zone have been aware, but it is rumors. Yeah, I've heard. It is rumors, Corey. Yeah, and I want to remind my people out in the zone. I, and I'm my basketball people. I, I know my football people, man. Listen, th th we'll get to y'all next podcast. We, co we coming. Just, we, 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 we coming. We're, we're coming. We're we coming. We <laughs> just relax with us, now. And I rock, rock with us on this podcast. Love the NBA. You know, <laughs> we're, we're, we are still in the finals, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. And the rumor is that the New York Knicks are planning to make a run at Chris Paul this offseason. I want to repeat that for a second for my people that didn't hear. I want to pull the mic a little closer. The New York Knicks are planning to make a run, just a rumor, yeah. at Chris Paul this, this offseason. Corey, I want to know, do you think – it's a two-part question. First of all, do you agree with the timing of this shit? And second of all, would it be a wise trade for Phoenix to <laughs> out, quote unquote use Chris Paul to get a chip and then let him go? Mm. Slash, slash, because they may not win a chip, so slash, just get them to the finals and move on from him being that he's 36. What, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm glad you brought that up and allow me to run it back i'm gonna back up a tad bit here okay because i'm gonna put this in a vacuum first first of all phoenix would be freaking idiots to let chris paul walk this is in a vacuum um uh just, i mean you, you've seen it with your own eyes even if you don't win you you've okay. seen what can happen here now <sighs> we got a bit of a problem here 
Okay. Because Chris Paul is due $44 million next year if he remains as a Phoenix fan. So now earlier you talked about so 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 is that by, is Phoenix picking up that tab or is this from that's that's what we is, don't know yet. Is OKC what, picking up the tab? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I, not OKC. Is it? Is it? Well, did, did he go? He went to? Well, he did go to OKC. Yeah, he went. So, he went so, to OKC. So are, are, are they? Because I know sometimes the old teams still be paying. Yeah, I don't so, think that's the case for this one here. Okay, he could be a unrestricted agent in 2022. Um. Now, here's here's what a conundrum. This is why I preface it by saying in a vacuum, because Phoenix forget whether they win or lose or not. They got a decision to make regardless, because Booker's he's either due up or it's definitely going to be due up for an extension. You don't want to let him really get too close. You want to go ahead and lock him up. Aiton, you want to lock you know you you want to lock that guy up like like that's your core, right? But do you want to pay an aging? Chris Paul, forty-four million dollars a year next year, or even extending him past that for another three or four years, knowing that by the time he gets maybe 38, 39, 40 years old, he's going to be shot and he's not going to be worth all that money that you're going to be paying him. So they're in that Phoenix is in a conundrum right now. Now, let's go to New York. New York has the cap <laughs> to pull this off. Now it's gonna be between Phoenix. It's going to be between CP3. If they win, this could be a double-edged sword. Um, whereas, hey, I always, speaking of CP3, man, I always wanted to win a ship. I got one. I got one. Now, when I was sent from Houston to OKC, it was sent there as almost like being in purgatory. They sent me there to die. Yeah. Oh, but I did. I got him to the playoffs. Yeah, but that wasn't good enough. Yeah, you know, we look, man, we're trying to rebuild, man. CP3, man, you you want too much money. Look, man, I, I get it. We Hey, you're, you're the bomb, but man, man, nah, I don't know. Okay, cool. We're going to send him to another purgatory, or so we thought, in Phoenix Suns. And it's funny you brought up, you know, a while back where it's like Phoenix Suns, you know, people forget about you. The yeah. team that they reminded me of prior to this year was Sacramento. Sacramento is where players really go to be forgotten. Um, and you just don't think about it. like you, you think of, um, you know, uh, you think yeah, of uh, yeah, De'Aaron Fox over there. Um, you think of um, DeMarcus Cousins when he was over there. Um, you think of, of Buddy Hill, who's there, I think, now. And it's kind of like. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Buddy Hill yeah, over there? I think he is. Don't, don't quote me on that. I, I, I can look that up in a second. Um, but that's where people, I, I know he played there. I don't, I'm not sure if he's still, I can look that up real quick. That's crazy. Um, but that's where exactly the fact that you didn't even know, even know was my point. And Sacramento is barely on TV. Phoenix was barely on TV, yeah. you know? So I think that if Chris Paul wants to stay, it can't be about money. Now, we're talking strictly NBA money. Now, Chris Paul has to deal with State Farm where he's probably like, man, you know what, man? I'll take a pay cut and run this thing back. Do, because Chris Paul's going to have to decide, do I want to be, a, assuming that they win, yeah. do I want to be a multiple champion or am I cool with just one? Because, see, the thing about it is that we've seen this in almost every avenue of sports. Once, they, once people get that one, they're trying to get paid. You go back in CP3's case, well, I might, I, I get the ship, but man, how many other big time contracts is left out for yeah, me? I'm not sure. getting paid like LeBron James yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not getting, you know, I'm not getting paid like an Anthony Davis. I ain't getting, yeah. I'm getting bad. I ain't getting that type of bag. No, nah, he's not. No. Nah. And, 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 and let's just say that, you know, he wins and Phoenix is like, well, look, man, we want you here. Like, we know this ship does not run without you. But man, we can't pay you that, man. Like we can't, you know, if you like the environment, you you you're you're the leader of the ship over here. That's that's one thing. But man, we can't pay you that. What does Chris Paul do? That's going to be interesting. Where New York, they're going to throw money at his feet. Forget rose petals. Like in coming to America, where they laying it down for King Joffrey Joe Fur. They're going to be laying them green dollar bills about as green as the background that you're in right now. Chris Paul, come here now. It will be interesting. Let's just say hypothetically, he goes to New York. All of this is rumor, like you stated. 
um, how well does him and Julius Randle get along? That's yeah. going to be because they're both strong personalities and let, don't, don't get it twisted. Chris Paul comes there. He is automatically de facto leader of that team. J- you say what you want. Julius Randle is going to have to accept that because you've seen what happened. Yep. You've seen what happened. Devin Booker could have been like, oh, dude, man, this is my team. Yep. When I want to say it was, it was, it was um, Booker who said to Chris Paul, when he before the game even tipped off for the season even kicked off, man, this is your team. And even though Chris Paul came right back and said, nah, young fella, this is our team. But he had CP3 had the blessings right, of Booker of to be like, man, dude, you're the leader. We're putting all yeah. our chips in on you. Is that going to happen if you go to New York? Maybe no. it will. No. I doubt it. No. I think Julius Randle is like, look, this is my team. But that's going to have to get discussed. And I wonder if New York management is going to be like, hey, hey, man, look, how do you feel about this? Are they even running it by? It, 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 James Dolan is James yeah. Dolan. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, and yeah. He's not the most, I'll put it this way, he's not the most progressive thinking guy in the world. He doesn't strike me as an owner that's going to really run too much by his players, if no. anything. No. If anything. So, Look, he, he got a killer contract hit, you know, uh, with, with CP3. It's going to be up to what, what he wants. What say you? Um, I think that, like, knowing that they that he has a $44 million contract coming up, is that for one season? Yes. One season. One season. And then he'll be an unrestricted after that. One season, the dead cap, according to sportstrack.com, where they track all of this stuff here, he will have a yeah, dead cap of forty four million two hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and forty six mother father dollars. This will be the last year of the four year one hundred and fifty nine million dollar contract basically one hundred and sixty thousand dollar contract which he signed with houston back in 2018 2019 when he was said, 33 uh, years uh, old 160 million you said that total it. yep 160 million, million. yep cool. of his four, total four-year contract yep. that starts back from houston and it's going up now so maybe houston's paying that maybe i don't I... maybe maybe houston is still continuing to pay that contract. That's a good question, man. We need to find out. But I'm going to tell you, Corey, I don't think that uh, the Suns can afford to keep all the pieces they have now, especially if they have to pay Chris Paul at 40 million and, uh-huh. have to, and have to give DeAndre a bag. I mean, in order for them to really negotiate that stuff, I mean, they have to be doing some stuff behind the scenes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like like promising or, or get right money out of their own pocket. Yeah. Something I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know, but yeah. Um. Well, I don't like the time of this. <laughs> Corey, I'm glad you said. I'm glad you. And I got up. a nugget for you when you threw as well. I'm I'm so glad that you brought up one person now. James Dolan. Corey, <laughs> this, this, Corey, this this stinks. It, it fucking stinks. It smells oh. like it smells like James Dolan is all over this bullshit. What, bro? bro people the are timing in the, is horrible. Core people are in the finals. Yeah. And your PR people leak this bullshit during the fucking finals. And you know it was done intentionally. Corey, talk about trying to break up some chemistry from afar. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, like this couldn't wait, Corey. Like like, nope. like what like like your point like it's not like <laughs> it's not like the Suns are out of the playoffs. No, like the Knicks are. Yeah, but here y'all go already starting these preseason rumors. Like already the, time, the timeless things. That's why I, that's why I hate James Dolan. That, that's that, that's why that, that's why the Knicks be in the positions that they are. Cause what go around come around, and they and, and they're never going to be successful. They keep doing fucking ass shit like this. Corey, this is bullshit. It's yeah. bullshit. The time is bullshit. I don't like it, and I'm gonna leave it at that. It's it's so it's so nickish. It's yeah. so nickish. 
It's so it, Nikki's man. It, it is, and uh, and getting back to Chris Paul, um, he has a player option of this year, of this year, where he has to let Phoenix know by August the first of this year whether he's going to opt in or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's right over. That's, that's literally less than a month away. Man, listen, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have to watch that. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> what, what I what I what I would like to see him on the Knicks? No, no. I I don't want to see it, it, Corey. I, I don't either. Corey, look. I think he should ride out, man. Corey, I, I I do, but I Corey, don't got anyone throwing forty five million dollars in my face either. I can respect that. Corey, man. <laughs> Gotcha. Can, can, can we be real for a second, Corey? Mm. Like, you know, I didn't like when you referred to Robert Orr as a luckiest man yeah. who's ever played in the NBA. Yeah. I don't think that that term fits him. Yeah. But, Corey, I'm going to tell you, I think if the term lucky fits anybody, it's... <laughs> It's the New York Knicks. Corey, let me tell you something, man. If Chris Paul goes to the New York Knicks, it will be similar to Michael Jordan going to the Wizards. Yeah. It will be terrible. It, it, it will be – talk about somewhere sent out to die. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Girl, I don't care if they have Julius Randle. I don't care if they have uh, Quick Quickly and all them boys. None of them, none of them fit Chris Paul. Right. No, no, no. I don't want to see him in New York. I don't want to see him doing... No, I don't. I no. want him to ride out, man. I want him to ride out with the Phoenix Suns if that's what he chooses to do. Yeah. Corey, I do not want him to go to the New York Knicks. Not at yeah. all. Suns, whoever whoever needs to pay Chris Paul, let's get it done. Um, Chris Paul, if you... He, and this is the thing, too, I thought about. What if they propose? Because again, I'm under the I'm saying this under the impression thinking that the Rockets or some other team like OKC is picking up that tag. Right. Wouldn't it be nice for you know? Because I say Chris Paul maybe do what two more years maybe. Yeah. Um, it would be nice to see him go up like 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 the Lakers pay Kobe. Oh gosh, yeah. A, a good twenty million one season. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that could like, you know, restructure that, maybe do like a, you know, like a one and one or something like that. Whereas you're not because I don't think that I I don't think that Phoenix would have a problem doing like a one and one. Yeah. Um, But, you know, but, you know, but like doing like a four year. Shit, man! Uh, like no, that age, I, gosh, oh, nah, gosh! I, I, like, I, I don't think so. I don't want him to go to the Knicks either. But man, I, I hope Phoenix can work work this thing out. I do too, because um, like I said, it all depends. Because when players get that championship, you know, hey, cool, it's it's, it's bag chasing time. You know, like some of them do that, or some of them really like to the, the, the run it back, you know, or whatever. And and real quick, you know, you look at like somebody like LeBron or Kobe or, you know, the, somebody like that where legacy-wise, they're not chasing Michael Jordan, right? Like Chris Paul like Chris Paul can mess around and get two or three championships. He'll never be mentioned in the same breath as Jordan. I mean, he, right, I, right. I mean, we're having a hard time even putting him in the top five of point guards of all time, let alone Jordan. So you have to ask yourself, how, how many rings does it matter to my legacy? Like getting – like it's getting two just as good yeah. as getting one? Is it going to really yeah. propel that? Whereas you look at somebody like LeBron, or hell, even you, can, I would even throw Kevin Durant in there. Where it's like, hey, look, the more rings I have, the more you get to put me up with the ghost of Michael Jordan and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't think it. I don't think the legacy in regards of hardware means as much um, as far as quantity wise um, as it would to to like a LeBron or you know a Kobe or even a Kevin Durant or somebody like that. So you know, getting okay. one might be good enough. But hey, you got to get that one. I feel that if you've been on the journey that Chris Paul has been on, one one is plenty. I agree. One is plenty. I agree. You know, um, and real quick, um, Buddy Hill is still playing for the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> we know it because they're not on TV unless you got league pass, which I do not. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, 
Free my nigga Buddy Hill. You know what hey, I mean? Free he's been nigga. in purgatory since 2017. Man, listen. Free my nigga Buddy. Free my real. nigga Buddy Hill. Free my, real. Nigga, free my nigga Darren Fox. You know what I mean? Fact, you real. Come on over to the Lakers. You know what I mean? Yeah, Come I don't on. know what time it is, man. Come on. Love that. <laughs> Love that. We always recruiting, baby. We never stop. <laughs> always, man. Yo, man, I want to shout out everybody that been tuning in to the podcast, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my NFL people. We got y'all. Just be patient. You know what I mean? Yo, just shout out. Just shout out everybody that be tuning in on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? From now on out, so so nothing goes wrong. And the footage will be uploaded the very next day for my people. You know what I mean? I'm gonna make that. I'm just gonna at least be on the SoundCloud for my people. I get them because I, I think Corey, a lot of our people like to listen while they at work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, get, I get a lot of people that like to respect because a lot of people like to put the headphones, and a lot of people don't really pay for the YouTube premium. So if you just do if you if you listen on YouTube and you cut your phone off, it stops yeah. it stops the audio. Yeah. And, and again, respect. I, and again, I, this this is things that the people are telling me. I hadn't really took that into consideration, you know what I mean, yeah. for all my people out there that try to listen on YouTube while they're at work. So definitely, man, log on to the SoundCloud, you know what I mean, Sky Zone Society on SoundCloud. SoundCloud. We're going to have it up there tomorrow, again, tomorrow, the day before the game. Today is July 7th. We're going to have it up there on July 8th, you know what I mean, so y'all can tap in on the podcast, to the podcast. Word. Right before the games, y'all can get hyped, you know what I mean? Hear the predictions, hear what we think, you know what I mean? And, 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 to, and see if we're right or wrong. Most of the time, we're going to be wrong. We're going to just put that out there, you know what I mean? Yeah, shout but out hey, to the Bucks. Hey, <laughs> shout, shout out to the Bucks. Y'all about to hold Damn. us the fuck down tomorrow. Damn, Bucks. Uh, yeah, because we holding y'all down. Y'all need to hold us down. Please, you know what I mean? For sure, you know what I mean? But Joe Corey, I appreciate you, man. You know I'm gonna tap right, in. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a message like before the game pop off tomorrow. All right. A little, maybe I need to send a prayer over to make sure that we can look good on the podcast and be right yeah. for and be right for a, a time or two. Uh, maybe, maybe you know if I, I could be right on something twice a year, that'll be great. That's a start, and we could just work it, work it from there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. Hey, you stay safe out there, man. All right, my brother. Peace and blessings, bro. Peace. Peace.